Here we're going to tie a streamer called the Autumn Splendor. First thing I did was just added a large cone to the front of the hook and I uh, wrapped a little bit of lead wire as well right behind that cone that'll help stabilize it. Also adds of course weight to the fly. Next thing we're going to do is just take our thread and we're going to wrap a few times through this lead wire to keep it from sliding around, lock it down in place. And I usually bite through it four, five, six times or so, just enough to make sure it's totally secure. And once I've gone through it, we can take our thread all the way back to the bend. And I'll take my thread back up to basically where I tied in that wire. Now I'm going to take two pieces of brown marabou. You can also use a burnt orange color if you like the color of that. And we're going to even up the tips. And we're going to measure our marabou out here on the shank of the hook so that uh, it hangs off the back of the hook about the entire length of the, the shank. And I'm going to do a nice loose wrap to capture it. I'm going to wrap back pulling the marabou up as I wrap back to the, the bend of the hook. And now I can trim out the butt ends of that marabou. Now I'm going to add a little bit of flash to the tail of this fly. You can use either a gold or a copper crystal flash. I think what I have here is some gold. I'm going to take two or three strands, either way, two or three. I'm going to cut those out. I'm going to tie these in nice and long on each side of the hook with three strands on each side. I usually just kind of tie it in on one side, double it over, and tie it in on the other. And then you could trim that crystal flash. I usually trim it just a hair longer than the tail. Now the next thing to do is to tie in our rib. For this I'm just going to use some copper wire, some small copper wire. I just tie that in also all the way back to the bend. Now we're ready to tie in our chenille. I'm just using some medium brown woolly bugger chenille. I just tie that in right at the back. Make sure it's nice and secure. Now we're ready to tie in the legs. For this I'm going to use some medium round rubber. I'm going to have four total pieces. I have two here in my hand. We're going to tie these in at the basically the one quarter point from the back of the hook and then three quarter point forward. So you don't want to tie them right in the middle because we're going to tie in two sets. So we'll have one at the quarter, one quarter point, and then maybe three quarters. So I just tie in two of these right on top of the shank of the hook, and I just X wrap them into place with just some kind of X shaped thread wraps. And you want to make sure to leave them fairly long just to make it easier to work with. And once you've got the two near the back tied in, you can take your thread forward and tie in the two near the front. I'm trying to space them out a little bit. You don't want to put them right next to each other. Once you've got those tied in, you're going to take your thread all the way to the cone. Now I'm going to take my chenille, I'm going to wrap the chenille forward, and you have to dodge these legs with each wrap, being careful not to trap any of your materials. So I'm just careful, just move the legs out of the way when you need to jump in front of or behind them. It's actually not as hard as it looks as long as you just take your time. 
leave those legs long. If you leave them short, they like to get caught up in your material. So I usually tie them in a little long. And once you get past all those legs, it gets a little easier to wrap and manage your chenille. Now, once I get to the cone, I'm just going to take my thread and capture the material. A few tight wraps. Now we're ready to tie in our hackle. And for the hackle, I'm going to use two. I'm going to use a Grizzly and also a Grizzly Brown or Grizzly Coachman Brown. And we're going to tie these in right up here at the front of the fly. Making sure we get some nice tight wraps to secure them. Can trim out the stems. Now my first couple of wraps are going to be right up here at the front. So I'm just going to take both those feathers. And I'm going to do two wraps right at the front of the fly. After I get those wraps in, I'm going to just take the hackle. And I'm going to spiral it backwards. This is the more difficult part because I have to dodge all these legs. So I'm trying to be very careful here not to catch any with my fingers. You can use your index finger to trap some of them if you need to. Actually, I'm going to use my hackle pliers. One of those is just a little short. Hackle pliers will help me finish it off. Once I get to the back, I'm just going to take my wire, get it all uncut here. I'm going to wrap that wire forward. basically locking down the hackle and you also have to dodge these rubber legs with your wire and once I get to the front I can just capture that wire. Try not to trap any of your hackles. You could trim out the excess wire. Then of course you'll whip finish. And you can add a little bit of head cement, you know, if you want to take that step. Now, I've got to trim out the excess hackle here at the back, the hackle tips. So I just get in there and trim those out. Try not to trim any of your marabou if you can get away with it. There we go. Now you can trim your legs. I like to trim my legs fairly long. I like these puppies to really wiggle. So I usually try to leave, oh, about an inch or so of the legs hanging over each side. So I just draw them down. You can draw them up too. And I just trim those legs and they'll splay out. And they'll wiggle of course when you strip that streamer. And that is your Autumn Splendor. A little bit difficult to tie just because of the legs. Those legs like to get in the way and fight you the entire way. But other than that, it's really just a woolly bugger variation with with legs. So not too hard to tie. And you can get all the materials for the Autumn Splendor on our site in theriffle.com.